is currently being addressed in the legal community. And that is the topic of lawyers versus non-lawyers okay. in those, those titles, right? Yeah. And, and I believe that, you know, there's a, so there's, there's like two sides. There's, there's a group of uh, legal professionals who are like, Hey, you know, the term non-lawyer needs to go away. And then there's another group that's like, actually the term non-lawyer is relevant and it distinguished lawyers from non-lawyers, you know, as it pertains to with the legal community and legal profession. Can you say more about, you know, why there's a need to have the distinction between lawyers and non-lawyers? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm actually quite baffled to see this even being debated. Um, I think that um, there is some merit to people having an issue with it, but the, the issue is that, you know, um, it's not necessarily the term, it's the um, bad intention behind it. The distinction between lawyer and non-lawyer is critical to public safety and public well-being. An innocent bystander or potential client or anybody who is not a lawyer, a non-lawyer, um, cannot accidentally even assume that somebody who is not a lawyer, a lawyer, because you may reveal something to them that it will not be protected by attorney-client privilege. You may give them money that will not be protected by a trust account, um, and you know all these other items. Um, more, you know, but most importantly, confidentiality, privilege, and and trust comes in when you think somebody is a licensed attorney, you know, taking an oath, subject to the bar rules, versus somebody who is not. Um, I understand that there, you know, people in the legal profession want to be treated with respect. And absolutely, you know, my CEO of a company is a non-lawyer, but that doesn't mean he's less than me, who I'm a general counsel. He's my boss, right? So, so, and a lot of times people look at non-lawyer as some kind of a negative thing. And that's on them, in my opinion, because either they've been exposed to some treatment, maybe they weren't invited to a party that was for lawyers, maybe they don't get a piece of the profits because it's only for lawyers. So they may have felt left out uh, and they got that label, but that's not the same as a title. You know, so you can have many different titles. You can be the president of a country and not be a lawyer and that's all fine, but it is critical to always maintain and be able to clearly say lawyer versus non-lawyer. So nobody else uh, or a third party doesn't get confused and treats one as a lawyer. And I know that, you know, it, it's hard for a lot of non-lawyers to understand this because when you become a lawyer, you go through layers and layers. It's not just the education. It's not just the bar exam. You have to go through moral character and fitness. And they will go make you go through sometimes years of questioning. They will remind you daily that you cannot call yourself a lawyer until you have passed moral character and fitness and taken the oath and also paid your bar dues. So, you know, we just as lawyers have been you know, just ingrained and burned and put the fear of like legal jail um, before we can refer to anybody accidentally as a lawyer. Uh, so we were, you know, we are encouraged to, to identify as lawyers and distinguish ourselves from non-lawyers for that reason. So there's this word, this label is there for a good reason and it should serve a good purpose. If it's being used to discriminate, then I think the issue should be with the discrimination, not with the label. Um, a good mm -hmm. example I'll give you is when I'm an immigrant. I came to this country as a legal resident alien. Um, the word alien is very interesting. I think it's kind of funny, but I've not taken offense to it. Um, you have five years until before you enter the country that you're eligible to apply for citizenship. Until then, I was a non-citizen. I, yeah, you know, I, I yearned to become a citizen. I wanted to be a citizen. Did I feel a little left out? Yes, but that was also a fact that I was not a citizen. I couldn't vote because I was not a citizen. You know, I can't go around and say, change the label to non-citizen because it hurts my feelings or there's an articulate way of saying it or that we're all residents of this country and we all get the same stuff. We don't like, you know, obviously uh, all residents get some rights and benefits, but then only citizens get certain rights and benefits. And I'm not a natural born citizen, so I can never run for president, even though many of you have said that I should. So, <laughs> you know, again, I am not a natural born citizen. So again, does that hurt my feelings? I shouldn't. It's a fact. I wasn't born yet. I wish I was, but you know, I also, I'm really glad I was born in India and I lived in Saudi Arabia and I've had all these great experiences. So I don't take the non, and nobody should take the non to be anything less. You know, I've heard about non-residents, non-whites, non-citizens, like, you know, that label has no power as long as you give it any kind of a power. And two, go after the discrimination 
um, and any bad intention behind using that label. If somebody is being called a non-lawyer and being restricted from a job, from a position that you really don't need to be a lawyer for, or it's clearly some kind of a gender-based or race-based discrimination and they're using that label, then go to the core, the issue behind that label. But the label itself is not harmful. It cannot be banned. Um, it should be used to clearly identify if somebody's a lawyer and, a, and not, a not a lawyer. And I brought that up in my, uh, you know, when I say about the event, because a lot of lawyers are counsels uh, for companies. Um, and sometimes, you know, you, are you a contracts lawyer? Are you a contracts professional, right? There's a difference in that because if I'm a contracts lawyer, there almost always is a sort of um, expectation that I might end up giving legal advice, right? So it's always important to clarify, you know, am I a lawyer for a, or a non-lawyer? So um, that's another reason why I said that. And most of the time, it's just a matter of convenience, right? A non-lawyer a non can be a million different titles, right? A lawyer is, mm -hmm. is a lawyer. So... Uh, sometimes right. it's just a matter of convenience to just group that and to say, you know, non-lawyers, um, you know, you can be a legal professional and not be a lawyer, right? You can be a lawyer and also be a paralegal. There's a lot of back and forth and overlapping, but the core of it is if you're really identifying somebody is a licensed attorney or not, then you say lawyer and non-lawyer. So that is my right. position. I only think of public policy when I stand for it. I will not support it for any discrimination. I will not support it for any intention to keep anybody out of any opportunities that they deserve. Um, that, you know, I just want to clear that that's not why I'm saying this. I, I'm on the get rid of it uh, okay. model, right? I, I think part of this is because of the structure of the legal industry, right? If we were built as an inclusive model where anybody could come and do work. And again, I don't mean that we shouldn't get certified or understand how to do our job, right? But the model of regulation, how our country regulates lawyers is you have to go to law school, you have to take a bar exam or the like in some states, right? Mm -hmm. And then you are certified. And how do they maintain that certification, right? Well, you're supposed to go to CLEs every year and the like, right? But are you really telling me that we've learned something that nobody else can possibly learn in any other capacity? That's just not true. And I think you see that as technology has come online, part of the benefits of Gen AI is access to information, is access to knowledge, right? Mm. And the regulations, the structure of how it's set up is designed to restrict that. It's designed to protect lawyers in their basically built monopoly, right? Instead of letting external factors come in. Why does that factor into the non-lawyer discussion? Well, mm -hmm. if we were an inclusive industry and we were just trying to say, hey, that's somebody who's been certified, that's somebody who hasn't, that's one thing. But it's used in our industry as an exclusive term, as a way to try to benefit ourselves, right? And so I just mm. believe that the simplest solution is, how about we just come up with other things? Why do we have to say not lawyer? lawyer? Can we just say, oh, they are a legal service provider that has this expertise, right? I'm a lawyer, but there's lawyers that do all kinds of things, right? There's contracts lawyers, there's SEC lawyers, there's litigation right. lawyers, right? You can use other terms and everybody understands what's going on and nobody's going to be hurt by that. I think it is used too often. And I don't mean by everybody. I think there is a subset of people who are using it as just kind of an, uh, an adjective, right? Mm -hmm. But I think there's a large subset of lawyers who use it as a, as a way to exclude and give themselves sort of that title, that, that thing that helps them say, I'm different and therefore that's why you come to me. Wow. Very interesting take, you know, um, and, and very valid points on this. And because it's, it's, it's becoming a heated a heated item that's uh, being <laughs> debated across uh, several different individuals. And we're seeing it, um, you know, surface publicly. Um, and I think I heard somewhere that I, I believe that there is a group of attorneys that are being, um, you know, petitioned to sign documents saying, hey, we all stand uh, together on this, that we want to basically throw away that term, not lawyer. 